Okay, so um, I, I, I'm keenly aware that I'm the last speaker and we're right up against the seven o'clock deadline. I, I'm holding you back from drinks and food. Um, if you've got any plans, let me know. Um, minor point of interest, uh, that's a boutique pedal uh, made in Cornwall, uses BC108 transistor, classic fuzz face style, but it's got a buffering section. Also, I don't own it anymore. Um, we're going to talk about Fizzbuzz, because of course we are. Because this, Fizzbuzz was invented to avoid the awkwardness of realizing that nobody in the room can buy and research an array. I mean, everybody thinks they can, but <laughs> just count the off by one error, okay? And yet, and yet, It's not just a toy problem. So the way that this was probably implemented, and we'll, we'll get to that in a moment, but if you're not familiar, just quick hand, hands like who's familiar with Fizzbuzz? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go. Those of you not, it is a drinking game, but if you go and look at the Wikipedia page, it says it's a child's game. Honestly, you really should not mix these two. It's a, <laughs> there are morality questions and legal questions. The point is, it's a counting game. One, two, three, but no, it's divisible by Fizz as it were. Four, buzz, it's divisible by five, uh, and so on and so on, until you hit 15, divisible by three and five, it's fizz buzz. Um, the idea is that if you get this wrong, then you have a drink, and, and, and it all goes downhill from there. Um, playing this drink, uh, this drinking game without drinks is entirely dull. Um, do not do this, I have done this once. We were bored, we were waiting, and everybody was on point. We were fucking human calculators, and it's like, this is the most boring thing, nobody's getting anything wrong. So, this is one of the implementations people will come up with. So I'm gonna present this in Python. People often come up with a, pres a kind of structure like this, and they kind of pride themselves on, oh, isn't that cool? It's kind of clever, I never have to handle Fizzbuzz case. It's a kind of like emergent side effect. Man, this is so stateful. There is so much complexity in eight lines of code, it's ridiculous. This is the kind of implementation that gave us that tweet. Um, there is also an implementation here, I'm not going to diss this one this evening, the use of implicit else. Oh, come on, people, get it straight. You will either find out my rant on implicit else tomorrow or next April, depending on how things go. Let's talk about this one. Okay, so I've got two implementations. They are the same number of lines in length. They produce the same results. They are both correct. They both pass the tests. But let's talk about coverage. Brian Marrick said, I expect a high-level coverage. Sometimes managers require one. There's a subtle difference. The problem here is this word. Whenever people use it, it's like they think they know what they're talking about. It turns out there's more than one kind of coverage, and we can easily fool ourselves. Let's take that first example. Thank you. <laughs> a cert fizz buzz one is one. Okay, cool. So with that, we've achieved 100% function coverage, which basically means we called it. We have achieved 75% statement coverage. This is what people normally call coverage, but they never use the word statement. It's like there's only one kind of coverage. No, there isn't. There's branch coverage. Every if has two parts, two branches, okay? We have only covered 50% of the branches. In terms of full path coverage, not basis path coverage, which actually gives us the wrong answer, different talk, 25% path coverage. Okay, now, Assert fizz buzz of 15 is fizz buzz. Boom, I have hit 100%. We can go home. Only 50% path coverage. You know there are four different kinds of result. We've gone and fooled ourselves. Let's go and look at this one. Fizz buzz of one. Okay, what have we got? We've got 62.5% statement coverage, 25% branch coverage, 25% path coverage. And another case, and we're still not at 100% on the statement coverage. And still not at 100%. And then finally, we achieve 100% on all the kinds of coverage that I care about today. It turns out that there is a fundamental difference between these styles. Okay, they have, I'm not telling you that you need to always labor out the logic, but I am telling you that it is incredibly easy to fool yourself. And you need to be very careful. The next time you use the word coverage, catch yourself and say, what kind of coverage? If you just say statement coverage, you've just opened up a conversation. Do the same with your colleagues. Thank you very much.